sure. Oh okay. God. Sorry. Oh man. Welcome to the new normal podcast. Hey. Today we're talking about why do people settle for poor dating options? Uh. If you're watching on YouTube, y'all make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, share, uh, make sure y'all give us those thumbs up and hit the notification bell. If you're on Facebook, y'all make sure y'all like the video, share the video, follow the page. I'm trying to grow this Facebook page right now. So y'all help me grow this page. Hold on real quick. I gotta send a text message. I'm tripping my bed, y'all. So Ashanti, why you think people settle for poor dating options? Oh, um, I think that's all they feel like they qualify for. I think there's a lot of people that um definitely bank on there's pee in the dating pool and they're gonna harp on that. And I feel like you are what you attract. So mm -hmm. if you have poor dating options, it's probably because you are a poor person. Think so. Yeah, not like, you know, monetarily. Monetarily. But just like, but yeah. In a in a energy and in abundance, like all of that kind of stuff. Y'all make sure laugh. if you if you're watching our video, make sure y'all giving us a like, thumbs up, loving it, sharing it. Um, we really appreciate it. We're trying to grow the channel on YouTube and Facebook right now. We greatly appreciate that. Um, I agree with you. I think a lot of people settle for bad dating options because they're poor. And like I said, not monetarily. I want to say this. You made a post today. As a matter of fact, let me go look at your post and so I can read it verbatim because it was funny to me. <laughs> it said, it's crazy how a man got to be financially stable to date a broke woman with kids. Like, first of all, why would you want to subject yourself to the kid aspect? Yeah. Like, I don't think a lot of men, for me, I don't think a lot of men really cares about a woman's money like that. Mm -hmm. But the kids is a big issue. Oh. Like, you got to take care of somebody else's child. And then, God forbid, they're like an active daddy. Now you got to let this man have an influence over your household because that child is going to say, well, my daddy said this. My daddy said that. Or you worried mm -hmm. about, you know, you can't discipline that child because you worried about what the father may say or what the mother may say. Or if she put this child ahead of you. So mm -hmm. that kid aspect already. It's, it's, it should be a big deal breaker, but a lot of men sign up for it. Yeah, and you know, my response was like, you chose that person. Yeah. Like, you're complaining about somebody you chose. I don't think that man or one, a man or woman should be dating and they're not financially comfortable in whatever means that is, right? So if you yeah. are able to comfortably pay your bills, even if that's you paying a $20 bill, you know what I mean, each month, if you can comfortably do that, cool, but... If you are a man or a woman and you're not comfortable in your finances, you need to be focusing on developing those skills and not trying to get in the bedroom and get in a relationship with another person. We need to talk about that. Why do people have a high sex drive and be broke? You know, I just made a, a post a couple of days ago and, I, and it was something like along the lines of like, it's selfish for you to be um, financially lacking. Mm -hmm. And to have kids. And I said, yeah, because your kid cannot survive off of the hookah and vibes that it took for you to get that baby. Hey, I agree with that one. I a hundred percent. But hookahs and vibes is typically how they get the baby. Right. But I'm just saying, you putting your kid through that. You got good off hookah and vibes that night. Your baby cannot. Right. Why do in 2023, why are we still having the same issues with like baby mama stuff or understanding that a guy needs to be financially stable to take care of you and the family um marry before you carry why are these issues that we're talking about seem to be escaping us at, at many times like why you think we would have with social media your friends your mama you know tv you would think people would have learned by now why you don't think they learn from these mistakes i think that there's just not a lot of emphasis and importance on the black family structure like it used to be. Mm. Um, I even was just looking at something recently and this girl was saying she doesn't feel like there are privileges that a boyfriend should get, like buying a house. Like, are you telling me you will sign a contract 
that's going to legally bound bind you to paying a mortgage with a person that does not want to legally tie themselves in marriage to you. Like it's like they go through so many avenues to be connected, but yet disconnected. Right. Well, I never thought of it like that. Yeah. Like that is, that is weird because I feel like children having kids with somebody and then people don't want to get married. It's a wild thing too, because there's no thing bigger that's going to connect you to a person that like a, like a child, a person you. that yeah. came out. Yeah. yeah Y'all together putting this energy out there and now y'all can't be together. But I also noticed that so many people are actually pregnant longer than they are in a relationship. Yeah, I, I do not argue with women who got pregnant by a man that wasn't their boyfriend. Girl, no. You can't tell me but that even thing. that, we need to talk about being married. Yeah. And I know a lot of women, they like to say, well, marriage doesn't solve anything. Marriage doesn't do this. Marriage doesn't mean nothing. But when men are telling women you should marry before Carrie, the reason men are saying that is because marriage does mean something because it shows as a man that you have high regard for this woman to even marry her. To say that, hey, I want to take care of you. I want to start a family with you. And I want to do this, you know, try to do this for life with you. Mm -hmm. If you just out here having sex with everybody or anybody and, you know, let's say you, you're you not loose like that, but you're having sex with this guy. He's your boyfriend, the next guy. That's your boyfriend, the next guy. That's your boyfriend. How? And none of these men think you're special enough to get married? Or you don't think any of these men special enough to marry them as well? Right. Like there's a like two things being desired and being valued. Right. Yeah. So I definitely feel like as a woman, like I don't want to say I want every man to desire me, but I of course want to present myself in an attractive way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would rather a hundred people in the room to like value me, mm -hmm. see a value in me, whether that's in their relationship a friendship a romantic relationship a connection something to net someone to network with i would rather have that type of value than to walk in the room and i'm desired by a hundred men mm. you know and so i think that sometimes it gets intertwined and people think that desire and value are one so if someone desires to want to sleep with you um you you find that like a value yeah and I think that goes back to when women till the sleeping, men sleeping with women and men dating women or marrying women too. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of women conflate the two. They think that they're valuable because a man is sleeping with them when yes. we all know that a lot of men just out here throwing that Peter walk around to, you know, who could just really give it to them because yeah. a lot of men ain't having sex like that. I hear a lot of girls talk about it like, that type of desire versus value conversation comes up when you hear girls talk about, well, I talk to doctors, I talk to engineers, I talk to this, but like, were you valued in that way? Like, were you going to office parties? Were you getting invited to family Christmas stuff? Were you like becoming integrated into his life? Or was he taking you to a nice dinner and smashing you afterwards? Mm. that's a different type of involvement yeah, I, with the man. I think a lot of these women getting smashed don't like that. Yeah, and just because you can sleep with someone doesn't mean that you can be in a relationship with them. Right, right? or the, or like for men, just because a man sleeping with a woman doesn't mean he values her either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's sad because like I said, a lot of men, we need to get out this mindset of just thinking just because it's there on a the platter that you're supposed to eat it. Like, I think a lot of men have to upgrade their mindsets on how they go about giving their sexual attention away because I made a post where well, I shared a post and it said a lot of these women would know they was ugly if y'all stop hyping them up because we don't talk about low hanging fruit enough. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is it might be a slow Tuesday and I might get on a Tinder or might hit up this fat chick I know or a woman that we say isn't conventionally attractive, but it probably a lot of dudes hitting her up. Whereas it might be someone that's very beautiful or very gorgeous have, might have an empty uh, DM or empty inbox because a lot of men look at her and feel like, oh, she looks like I got to bring the bag or I got to have something going for myself. You know what I'm saying? Would you think that the man that seeks out the low hanging fruit would also be low hanging fruit? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I was I would say a man that is seeking, Sean said agreed. A man seeking out low hanging fruit will probably be low hanging fruit too. Because if you're a man and you having your way out there, there's no reason for you had to go for that low hanging fruit. Yeah. And that's how I feel about a lot of women. I feel like <laughs> a woman, if she having her way out here on the day market, there's no reason for her to say, My baby daddy was broke. You know what I've been seeing today? So they got this fat dude on. He, he fat, right? But it's a, a viral picture, but he fat. Mm-hmm. And it's just him and his boxes, but his meat showing. Right? Mm-hmm. But uh, a girl, the girls, however, go to the comment section. And one of the girls said, he doing good. Talking about the size of his penis. He, was, he doing good because my baby daddy had a tussy roll. And I'm like, how are women comfortable saying this type of stuff? And this is who you decide to get pregnant by. Because they want to distance themselves so far away from like that decision that they almost try to dehumanize the person they had a a kid with. Yeah. Like you want to distance yourself so far from this mistake. Yeah. Like I see what y'all see too. He's horrible. He has, he has bad sex. He has, bad genitalia he is deadbeat you know what i mean like all of those characteristics they almost want to aggressively separate yeah and get back to like what the other people doing sean said if you at the top of the tree you wouldn't even be in the same spaces as low-hanging fruit that is true i agree i agree with that one 100 percent because like i said i don't even know how people are comfortable dogging out people you was in a relationship with you was married to you had kids with because this was the thing i wanted to talk to tonight about tonight is so many women say my ex was a narcissist that's why we broke up and when you look at the stats of how many people are actually diagnosed narcissistic it's It's like yeah two to five percent of people yes and I'm like, what the hell going on? And actually, I'm gonna look it up. But the, you know what? You said diagnosed. Yeah. You know what? I, I would say some people don't believe in therapy. You know what I mean? So I do yeah. believe that there have been some that escaped skated through the cracks, but not that freaking many. I swear, like every other person I'm scrolling on TikTok dated a narcissist. Really? Yes, yeah, like everybody dated one. I had to go back and look and see. What's the definition of a narcissist? I did, I did the same thing because I was like, it's too many women saying they dated and broke up with somebody because they narcissistic. And it's like, yeah. all of y'all got psychology degrees where y'all could just label these men. And Look. that's been going on a lot too. But a lot of women are just diagnosing these men or, or the bad yeah. mouthing these men that y'all was in relationships having sex with. And we ain't talking about some people a short period of time, but we it's people we know six, seven years dating people. You know, that goes back to Erica Mena. Remember, I was saying a lot of the things that she overlooked with Safari in the beginning of her relationship with Safari were the things that came to the demise. Yeah. For whatever reason, you were able to push it to the side, stomach it, sweep it under the rug, get past it, get past it, get past it. You got to the point and now you want to air it out. But baby, it's been going on since the inception. So I got the 12 traits of narcissism up here right now. Okay. I'm going to ask you your opinion. Okay. You say men or women who you think this vibe, these traits vibe with more. Okay. Having an unreasonably high sense of self-importance and require constant excessive admiration. Mm. I think both, but I would say women. Feel that they deserve privileges and special treatment. I think men. You think men have. um, I feel like they feel privileged to our bodies and they should take us to Chili's and get sex. Okay. So, yeah. Expect to be recognized as a superior even without accomplishments. Yes, men. Make achievements and talent seem bigger than they are. Men. Pre, be preoccupied with fantasies about success, power, brilliance, beauty, or the perfect mate. Women. Believe they are superior to others and can also spend time with or be understood by equally special people. Men. Be critical of and look down on people they feel are not important. Uh, 
I would say both. Expect special favors and and expect other people to do what they want without questioning them. Amen. Take advantage of others and to get what they want. Amen. Yeah. I think so. I think both, but have an ability, have have an inability or unwillingness to recognize the needs and feelings of others. Have an inability and unwillingness to recognize the feelings and needs of others. Yes. Amen. Be envious of others and believe others envy them. Women. Behave in an arrogant way, brag a lot, and become and come across as conceited. Be arrogant. What was it? Be Behave arrogant. in an arrogant way, brag a lot, and come across as conceited. Ah, uh-huh. both, but I'll give it to women. Insist on having the best of everything. For instance, the best car or office. <clears throat> women. It's at the same time, people with narcissistic personality disorder have trouble handling anything they view as criticism. They can become impatient or angry when they don't receive special recognition or treatment, have major problems interacting with others and easily feel slighted, react with rage or contempt, and try to belittle other people to make themselves appear superior, have difficulty managing their emotions and behavior, experience major problems dealing with stress and adapting to change, withdraw from or avoid situations which they might fail, um, feel depressed and moody because they fall short of perfection, have secret feelings of insecurity, shame, humiliation, and fear of being exposed as a failure. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah, I was like on TikTok and there was this girl saying that she, uh, she was giving this example. So she went to brunch with this guy and apparently like a couple days went by and she said she was like, you know, thanks for everything. He paid the bill, you know. And so a couple days went by and he like sent her this text and was like, it's been on my mind. And this is causing me to not want to particularly invest further in you. But you didn't say uh, thank you for paying the bill for brunch. And gratitude is like super important to me. And so if you aren't a gra- gracious person, I don't know if I want to be with you, right? And so like, her response was like, I understand your concerns. I wish you all the best. And he was like, I don't think you understood what I was saying. I was just saying, I wish you would be <sighs> gracious. And she called him a narcissist. That's uh, that what? That's part of a trait. Uh, yeah, because I was like, at, at first I was kind of like, girl. But then I, I felt like he wanted her to specifically say, Thank you for paying the bill. When she was like, you know, thank you. I had a good night. I had a great time. I have never sat across from a man and said, thank you for paying tonight. Ever in my freaking life. I would never do that. I always say, oh, my God, I have a great time. This was so amazing. Thank you. I can't wait to see you again. The food was great. I ain't never told no man. Cedric, thank you for paying tonight. Excuse me? Yeah, I ain't, I, I ain't, <laughs> I've never looked for a woman to even say that. Like, even if I open the door for a random stranger that's a woman, I don't even look for her to turn around and say, thank you for opening the door. Yeah. Because some things are ingrained in us as, you know, as a society, but as men that, you know, shivery, open the door for a woman, mm-hmm. open a car door. Like, if you're out in public, that's just what, you know, what you're supposed to do. You yeah. Know? And you see a woman putting her bags of groceries in the car and something seems heavy. A case of water need to be taken up to you know her apartment or her to her door. Yeah. You just do it because that's how we're taught to just do things mm-hmm. and just be chivalrous and generous. But now I think a lot of men today are like, I'm not doing that. Oh, I don't think the chivalry is being taught because I don't feel like it's always Women, black fathers in the household to do it. Yeah, that. But when you have stuff like the feminist movement saying that we're equal and people. You had uh, as people, and then you have a lot of people crying and whining and saying that you know women aren't paid equally, and they debunk that. But they have so many studies debunking um, that it's like, you know what? How about you get your own water since we equal? How about now, nah, sir? I hit you with the door. Thank you. Is yeah, I'm gonna killer. say thank you every time. 
I think politeness is. But see, I don't. But I'm saying I don't. I'm not saying politeness is wrong. I'm saying I just don't expect it. Yeah. I I I no, nah, sir. I hit you with the door. Thank you. Is needed. Lol. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> I definitely feel like politeness is gonna get you in doors that like yeah. nothing else can, and I'm never gonna be like. But I guess that goes back to me too as a person because I don't rec- I don't expect anything out of a person either. I'm just yeah. not. I'm just like people say I'm an asshole because like social media. But when people get to know me, it's like I'm genuinely nice. Like I have strong opinions about stuff, and I think that rubs people the wrong way. But me being a genuine nice person, I'm not looking for nothing. Yeah, I don't want nothing from a person. And like even when I express to women when it comes to like dating, most men that are around you are there because they're actually in a predatory nature because they're using that friendship to get closer to you, to have sex with you. But a lot of women want to say that a lot of men can just be friends. And I don't, I don't say it's a hundred percent not capable, but majority of the time that man around you to have sex. I think think? out of all of my guy friends, I've only had one that tried to cross the line. We're no longer friends but they tried to cross the line. A lot, a lot of men will be friends with a woman for years. Yeah. I mean, I think my friends are handsome in their own right, but they're like not my type of guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they look nice, but they're not attractive to me in like a romantic way. So. Yeah. And see, I think <clears throat> if what, the female friends that I call my friends, I feel the same way. Yeah. Like, they not my type. Like, uh, they gonna see this, but they ain't got no ass. Like I like women with big butts and stuff like that. I like a thicker woman because, like the woman I was talking to before, my wife, she was slim, and like one day I rolled over on her and I put my arm around her, and her damn hip bone was sticking out. I was like, Nah, dog, this ain't it. This this ain't it. I and I, I know you slim. I know you slim. Honey, I'm slim, look, thick, look, though. Look, look, Ashanti slim got Ashanti got mad at me one day because I was like, Yeah, you like it. She's like. Don't call me like it. Honey, he ain't seen this Lanky. wagon I got there, oh, honey. Oh, hell. Hey, mm. hey, I hey. come in with a jacket yeah, on. He ain't yeah, seen it. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, I agree with Cedric. I thought you were an a-hole, but I can see differently now. But I'm sure many think the same about me. We both are strongly opinionated. Yeah, and that's okay. Like, I don't... People got to know, like, I have thick skin. Yeah. And, but... and. When I say stuff to people, I need you to give me that same energy back, and I'm not gonna take it bad when I get, when you give me feedback. And so many people get around me that meet me, and they start talking candidly and freely, and they're like, "This nigga really don't feel no ways about what I just told him." Like that sounded harsh coming out of my mouth, but so many people want to pussyfoot and sugarcoat stuff. Well, you can't have real dialogue and real conversations. And I think a lot of the times that happens in relationships because the first six months to a year when you first date somebody, you mean their representative. Yeah. And that's the sad part. You mean their representative. You don't really know who you got. And just even the conversation that I was having last night, I was like, I told the young lady, I was like, sometimes you don't, you're, you don't seem like you're fostering an environment for your husband, your husband or your boyfriend to be 100% open with you. Because if I tell you my deepest, darkest secrets as a man from the man's point of view, you're going to try to siphon it through the woman's lens. Yeah. And now when I say something about, you know, my sexual desire, you boil it down where you shouldn't be like this, or it's coming from a hurt place or a place of not being healed or something like that. So it's like, don't try to siphon the man, the male experience down to something that could be, you know, degenerate or hurtful or we men are hateful in this aspect. It's just how men are. And I tell people like this in relationships, you should not try to a lot of times understand the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. The things that they tell you, you should just let them be. Yeah. Understanding them sometimes kind of like. I have you more confused because you're like, I'm thinking I understand it. Then when you think you understand it, something happened in that relationship. Like, well, I thought I had it figured out. And now this person showed me I don't have it figured out. Yeah. You cold? No, I'm just okay. want to be comfortable. Oh, uh, you look like you, you smoked a little bit before you got here. You got geek. <laughs> no, I don't smoke. Oh, you don't smoke? Uh, Did you drink a little bit? No, I ha- I work, so I'm kind of tired. You work? Yeah. Um, you know, it's Valentine's Day. 
Well, coming Close. up. So what you been doing lately? Waxes, facials, all that stuff. Do you do like the VJJ facials? Yeah. I do. Vajayshaw. Is that ever weird to you? No. Have you ever seen like a a weird looking coochie? No, not particularly. Oh. No. So like <laughs> I got so many questions about this with with this vagal facial. So on average, how many times do you scrub a coochie? Uh facial a coochie? Um, it just depends. Like, you know, during um I have like clients I see regularly. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> I'm honest with my clients. I my goal is to reduce ingrown hairs, right? That's uh-huh. it. So once we get that solved and we get you on a regimen, <laughs> then I mean you can still come if you want to, but yeah. like that's the goal. So it just depends. Like during holiday seasons, like Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, um, I, I probably will do more. Yeah. But and like during the summertime too, because people are having bikinis and you know they're legs are out and they're just doing more stuff but a couple times a week so ingrown hair ingrown hair is the main <gasps> thing about like coochies yeah i mean any place it not just that but um that's i guess the most common who, place who do you think women do that for men or themselves uh themselves it hurts oh i was just wondering yeah. because you know some i know a lot of women do stuff for attention yeah. Like, even though it hurts, doesn't mean it's not for attention. Like a BBL. I don't know. A any BBL woman is like... A BBL is for attention. Hey, uh, would you, Hold on. Would you not agree? I was, I could argue, yeah. Okay. But... But a vajayshul, oh, I, I mean, I would say a vajayshul is for attention. I mean, Brazilian, if you're going around, like, updating your Facebook profile. Oh, I'm finna go get my <laughs> Brazilian today. Like, yeah, it's for attention, but not a vajayshul. Usually but they're it, insecure about it. Like, not in a bad way. Yeah, that's that what, way, that's, what like, I want. that's what I was wondering. So if it's if they do it for them, yeah, and it pretty much is covered up until it's you know typically have sex. Like, what what is the reasoning for getting that done? Because you get ingrown hairs. Like some some people's skin is prone to getting ingrown hairs, and they hurt. Oh, I, yeah. see, I didn't know that. They hurt. Like they could become I, infected. It could get really bad. So you got to get them out. Oh dang! I didn't see. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, and they'll, they'll cause discoloration, um, which you know, if you're wearing like jeans so, all the time or something. But if you're going to the beach, like you don't want to have to experience that. So I'm gonna ask this because I heard Kanye West say it on the song. Like, do people get the asshole bleach? Um. Yeah, people do. You do that too. I do not. Oh, okay. Um, I was just. I was. Just I will not be doing that. I was just one. I know this is a segue. If I got waxed personally, it would definitely be for a man. I'm content with not going through the pain. See, that's what I was thinking. If if the the pain, I, I was just saying because you wanted to look good sexually a certain type of way. But also, I don't think men really care about stuff like that. Ah, uh, there are some men that are particular. I've heard, but honestly, the pain is not that bad. People try to make it seem like you are gonna die. Yeah. Like, I can go get So, like, do you pluck hairs out of the tooth? Afterwards, like, if it's ingrown hairs, yeah. But the wax gets in. It's quick. If I'm going to tweeze, it's going to be a couple. No, because I had a facial one time, and they used this thing that pushed the stuff out your nose. Mm. That shit hurts so bad. Yeah, men are the most sensitive clients. Yes, that chunk hurts. I, like, had tears running out my eyes. Yeah, they usually do. They're big babies. I'm like, you got tackled. Yeah, like. People hit you on the ground and you're crying no. like a little tool, you know? See, you get used to stuff like that. Yeah, you get used to this. Take a deep breath, babe. Yeah, you get you get used to stuff. Get up, like get back that. in the game. Yeah. <laughs> she said, no, ma'am, I try once. The first time Never is always bad. When you keep going consistently, like not to be crude or anything, but I can wax myself. It's not that bad. Mm. You should you should tell the people where they can find you at. If they want to get a vajay, a vajay, a vajay come vajay get a vajay show. Come get a Brazilian. Come get a bikini, girl. If you don't want to do the whole thing, I can do a bikini, which is outside areas that would be seen if you had on a swimsuit. Um, you can find me at aesthetically Ashanti, A E S T H E T I C A L L Y, and Ashanti like the singer. I'm on all social media platforms, so and you can find my booking link on those platforms as well. This is the real question about your profession. Have you ever done it to men? 
Oh, I don't do male Brazilian. Oh, okay. I was just wondering. Absolutely not. Because I started seeing men are doing it now. Yeah. They are. Do women care about stuff like that? Um, I would say my man had to be in a very niche group, okay? What you mean? He had to be a swimmer, a bodybuilder. Oh, okay. Uh, you just working at Amazon and you're going to get waxed? I don't like that. Why, <laughs> Why that? Outside of like the professional men, mm-hmm. is usually a reserved space for men that are interested in other men. But what if they get a deal for women? Because you're getting your butt done too. Like I just don't like it. I'm confused. Yeah, like usually men, homosexual men, gay men get waxed. They're bald. I don't think I want my man to have a freshly waxed pelvis. Yeah, I, I don't, so uh, you don't care either, though, if he does or not. You only care if he is doing it. Yes. Okay, so you don't care. Yeah. I don't, if I don't, you are going and you are arching your back yeah. and getting your butt waxed. Ooh, that got to hurt. Yeah. Oh, no, your butt didn't hurt. Well, don't. Oh, it's actually the least sensitive part. Like the butt around the hole. Yeah. I know this is weird. But... Yeah, it has, like, a, not a lot of nerve endings like that. And it hurt. It's just kind of weird the first time because, like, not everybody's had wax in their butt. Yeah. But it didn't hurt. It's the least painful part. It's the part you and know you do this for a living. Like, you just that personal with these people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> y'all had, like, regular conversations while you were. Yeah, let me talk about like, everything. I mean, like, when I go see my wax lady, she know about my whole last 30 days of my life. I'm, I'm naked. Girl, you better get close to me. You don't know my business. But, yeah, like, we talk about stuff. They'll tell me personal stuff. Um... Some of them are like today, like one of my favorite clients, I ain't gonna say her name, but like she's transitioning to a new career. So we kind of talked about that. And like her, she got Valentine's Day coming up. Her and her boyfriend are uh, doing like a staycation and stuff like that. Yeah. And then I got clients who want me to take a picture afterwards. I got clients that are, I got a client that don't want to talk at all, period. She don't want to say nothing. That's how quiet. I am. So it's weird. Since you have these people, getting this personal with you <clears throat> and maybe telling you their business. I'm guessing I would guessing mm-hmm. guess it's kind of like going to the barber shop and you open yeah. up to your barber. Yeah. What do women typically say about like dating? What are their issues? What, what do they like to do? What, what kind of men are they looking for? Um, A lot of my clients are married okay. or like in relationships. Mm-hmm. So they have pretty good, standing you know with men like they mm-hmm. aren't men haters i have a couple that have interesting stories say like least. well i need to hear this uh i would say probably my most recent one is my uh client was dating a man that's in prison <clears throat> for murder <sighs> and she was like you know she's a mom and okay. has a child and i was like girl are you like because she doesn't know him okay before you go any further what does she look like i don't want to describe her i don't say okay well, let's go with terms we've been using on the podcast is she conventionally unattractive or attractive i would say i i don't want to give descriptions but i think you can imagine okay so is she cute though Okay, so she's not cute. Don't All right. say that. <laughs> you say you said that she's not cute. I didn't want to say it on there. I didn't want to say it on there. <laughs> she's not cute. Are we, uh, I, I'm uh, guessing because she that... is cute, but like, oh, uh, you're trying to say, but now you didn't. You didn't put it out there. Now she you can't could be really more polished. It. I would say that she could be more polished for sure. So she's just rough around the edges. Very. Okay. Very. Okay. So what she was saying about the man in jail? And um, he's in jail for for murder. You know, and like. She, to my knowledge, she doesn't know him well. Like, I don't think they've seen each other in person, but like they yeah. talk on the phone and okay. So I'm like, her, you think he gonna get out and start being with you? You got a baby. He killed somebody. So does she talk about him? Is he gonna get out? Yeah, he getting out like in 2006, 26. Oh, so she got three years. She cut him off. I told her, I was like, you to leave him alone. Yeah. Did you see my love at the lockup review? Uh-uh. So I did a love at the lockup review, and I was like, I hate that we can't say certain things. You seen the big girl with the light skin, short dude, right? Yes. Recently. 
And I was like, why we can't say this woman is conventionally unattractive? She big as hell. She's a type, which I was, and I was going to actually play your clip from my show where you was like, she's the type of the one that let people sleep on a couch and be at the grocery store. Hey, baby, what you want? She looks like that. Yeah. But also, she is that. She, well, she is that, but she also controlling too. Did she beat him up? I didn't see the whole show. I just seen clips because I was like, I don't know why I saw a clip going around. I thought she beat him up, like was punching him and stuff. Oh, <laughs> That's not funny. You oh, is yeah. laughing at a man pain, but I'm pretty sure he deserved it. He be pulling her through the ringer. Did you see their first date? He charged 506. On oh, what? He, he was like, baby, do you got this? She said, Yeah, I ain't got no choice. On oh, what? They was at some, I guess it looked like a seafood place. Heck and no, he had been washing the dishes. No, nah, she paid it. Oh no. She paid it. She paid it. Oh, and no. then, like with the clip I seen, the brothers was trying to talk him like we don't even like. She said the brother said, We don't even like BBWs. And I'm like, they know. So he pulls out a tablet. He's like, Yeah, this is my jail tablet. I'm like, how the hell y'all got tablets in jail? Yo, I don't know. Like, they, they live in good. That's why I see a lot of them niggas go, willing to go back so quick. Do you see prison talk on TikTok? Oh. They be going live. Y'all like a, it's like the playground. Like, it's like really? recess. They be in there having a good time. I see. It don't, it don't never like it. I don't, nothing I want to do. But they be in there cooking burritos. I see. And that. cooking and like having fun <laughs> and dancing and doing so. I'm like, y'all see, like, y'all in summer camp. So do you think a man from prison can be re rehabilitated and become a good partner? I do. Would you date a man that's in prison? Or mm -hmm. hold on, would you date a man that has been in prison? Not currently, but he's working towards something. Would you date a man that's been in prison? Mm, I can comfortably say would I date a man that's been in prison? <sighs> Sean says she sucked into prison talk. Yeah, you seen prison talk? It's crazy. I ain't never seen them. I, I would it. say just off rip, no. Yeah. But see, the reason being is because I need to see time, corrective measures, mm -hmm. corrective measures applied. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's why I would say yes. But if it's just you out and like you now you on the market, heck, no. How would your family feel about you dating somebody from prison? And your daddy a lawyer. Mm -mm. He won't like my daddy gonna run that background check and he already ain't gonna be feeling it. He ain't gonna be feeling it. Um, but what what if you came upon a million that ex prisoner? I mean, like I said, those things are gonna have to be implemented. Okay. You know, like if he got in trouble and he was like 19, 20, he got out when he was 25, 27, and, and now he's 2037. Yeah. And he's like had time. He has a legit career. Yeah. And it depends on his lifestyle too. You know what I mean? You was a mobster. You was out here often dudes. Okay. Nah. Yeah, I'm just trying to, like I said, today we're just trying to figure out why people if people that's watching, why do you think people feel like they have to accept poor dating standards? Yeah. Or dating options. Y'all let us know in the comment section why y'all think that is. And let us know where y'all from. Um, I agree with what you said earlier about a lot of people. They lack something and not in the financial aspect. Yeah, they're poor. They're poor. Poor in energy, poor in mindset, poor in movement. <clears throat> I, I feel like it. prison is traumatic. I just can't imagine somebody coming in. I'm sorry, coming from in extensive bit not having certain tendencies resurface that's true and a lot of times i don't want to go to therapy about that do you think do you think how what percentage of men that go to prison do you think participate in homosexual acts probably over 50 you think over 50 percent of men Probably about 50. I think, I think if he's a re res recidivist, I think that's how you say it, a person that you know does jail multiple times, I probably would imagine he might be. He's going to see his boyfriend. He's doing felonious activities, go back in there and get yeah, his. Yeah, he's going to see the boyfriend. Heck no. Maybe a dude that been in there and then got out, yeah. Or a dude that went in like super early, let's say he's 16 and get out at like 30. He ain't trying to go back because he's never probably experienced sex like that. Or 
He could be all the way gay if he never experienced sex with a woman. Who knows? I don't want to find out. Yeah, I don't think nobody want. I want to find out either. Have you? Do you watch Love at the Lock Up a lot? Uh uh-uh, oh, but like I haven't seen the clips on TikTok. I was like, I gotta. So why do you think those people? Th- think they can date those people in prison and then when they get out and sometimes people have like that complex they want to fix and rehabilitate something Mm -hmm. and that something is like a person you know what i mean Mm -hmm. like oh like with that girl and Derek. is his name Derek? the shorts yeah yeah i think monique and Derek. monique yeah like he's at his lowest right and she feels like i can be valued in this way because he needs me Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and so he's gonna value me, and we're gonna the dynamic is gonna work because now I have a value that he needs, and he has a value that I need. So companionship and being provided for is mm. that thing that they are um, like sought out for, right? Yeah. So he was looking for somebody that can help fund his lifestyle, and she was looking for someone that is like dependent upon her and is gonna give her that like con- unconditional love. Do you think that the people on the outside, <clears throat> do you think they have a sense of wanting to be needed? Yeah. I think we all do, mm-hmm. in a sense. Like, I fully feel like I can operate this world without my husband. Mm-hmm. I want to need him to carry the water in the house. I want to need him to be at home with me. I want to need him to open up a jar of pickles like i want to need you not mm-hmm. for like small stuff but you know what i mean like yeah. i want that i want to feel needed too i don't know if i want to feel needed to their extent yeah but like i think we all have a like want to want to feel a void mm. you know what i mean that we do so great even yeah. though like really anybody could do it but you know what i mean like he like when i you know put his toast in the toaster you know what i mean like so he like when i start the coffee in the morning like my man likes that kind of stuff and i like when he rakes the leaves you know i don't know but we all have that need to want to be wanted and needed have you ever dated anybody when you were at your poorest i don't think i've been at a poorest and then no we're not talking about money we're not talking about money of course probably like 20 something yeah how did that go and how did you know? Okay, so looking back over it, and you're how old now? 28. And you said maybe you was like 20. Yeah. What do you think that taught you? Um, like a lesson. I'm saying what kind yeah, what kind of lesson did you learn? What did you learn from like dating men when you're at your pores? Like why you wouldn't do that again? Like I mean, I wouldn't do it again because they wouldn't be a good husband. I mean, I was, at 20, I just could you meet me like at Sky and get me in the club? And can I see Sky? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go ahead. You know, you got a nice car. Mm, okay. That was all I cared about. That's all you care about. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, girl, I got my man right there in the Mustang. So is the bad boy thing a thing with young girls? Um, Probably so. I don't really like bad boys. So. Oh, you never like bad boys? I really know. Oh. I like men to treat me nice. So. Oh, okay. You know, it seemed like I. I feel as if when I'm an asshole to a woman, I get the best compliance out of her. Yeah, I'm sure. I don't know why. As soon as I'm nice and open and bubbly and, you know, fun and, you know, caring and giving this woman a whole bunch, it feel like she feel like she can walk over me now. No, not particularly. I think that's just someone that doesn't have emotions regulated because I don't want my man to be mean to me or asshole to me. I don't want to experience asshole partner yeah like that's the quickest way for me to just gracefully bow out i'm not you ready to put up with that go get you somebody to fight with go find your christian rock i'm not it yeah we hey we need to sign that petition to get them counsel yeah i'm your michelle obama yeah we uh we need to counsel them so when michelle obama said that young girls give up too easy you think that's a true statement Mm, i think it is inaccurate i think it is a assumption based upon people that she knows, but not particularly based on a, so, a mass group of people. So you think the women that are married today, uh, the women that I'm, she said I like Ashanti. So you I think like the his- women that are married today are toughing 
and sticking around with their husbands? We don't know. We don't know the confines Listen, of their marriage. You, you, you around I would women? imagine so, yeah. You around women? I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't, I would I'm imagine. always around my wife and then the people that do the podcast. So. I would imagine, yeah, that'd be a challenge. Because, um, yeah. you know, I hear, from what I hear, I hear different, but also that goes with, you know, who your wife or, you know, who you associate with, too. Yeah. So I do think it is a thing of birds of a feather fly together. I don't know many divorced people, though. I ain't gonna lie. But, I mean, as far as my friends that have gone through adversity in their relationships, mm-hmm. um, they have definitely bitten off not more that they can chew, but, like, too much. Yeah. That they could have spat out. Yeah. But they work through it, and, and they're in a good place now. Mm. So, yeah. But I, I think that I can understand where Michelle Obama was coming from, but I think it was just a, a comment in poor taste because you aren't familiar with what was going on in that marriage. You're familiar with the surface stuff. Mm. But you don't know what else was going on. And you don't know where people's boundaries and breaking points lie. You know, I, I I might can agree with the boundaries and breaking point, but I do agree to the extent of when I hear people that do get divorced or hear stories about divorcing people. Typically, to me, and I said this to me because I like I said the boundaries and breaking points are different. It seems as if those things can be worked through. And why I think a lot, why I think this way is because most of the people that I hear that get remarried or, you know, start dating again, it's like, it feels like I'm dealing with pretty much the same stuff. That may be true. Um, But at least I'll be dealing with it on my own merit. Right. So. Won't both of them be your own merit? No. Not Why particularly not? because I'm legally bound to you right now. So I'm putting up with this because I have a contract saying that we're married. So I want to get out of that. Mm. Um, so like if my husband is cheating on me, I don't think that's a choice that I'm making. I'm legally bound to this partner. Yeah. So I'm having to put up with it. I would if you I get divorced. Yeah, you can't, but I'm just saying during before the divorce happens while you're still in your marriage yeah you are not choosing that for yourself you go out of you dating a man and he's like hey i'm out here i'm I'm dating around at least you know what you get into versus your husband saying hey i love you you're the only one i want here i'm gonna bring you in front of your mom and daddy my mom and daddy friends family we're finna pay for this wedding i'm finna tell them how much i love you in front of the lord that you're gonna be the only one that i'm with till death do us part and then you got 10 other girls in the back so do you think a man should tell a woman about his sexual appetite and be completely honest about it before y'all get together? Yeah. Why do it seem a lot of women, and I've heard this plenty of times, why do women seem to push for marriage and they don't seem to understand the sexual expectations that come with that? So let's say I'm a guy, I'm having sex with multiple women. We say we're monogamous now. And now me and you are only having sex. And now you got to take the energy I was giving to you and maybe five other women to only you. Mm-hmm. Why does it seem like women can't keep up when it comes to that aspect? Or Because I've heard this plenty of times. Like, I didn't know it was going to be this much sex. Or I wasn't expecting, you know, to be busting open like this. Or, you know. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I've never been married or lived with a partner. So I don't know what that transition is like. Um, regardless of the transition, I think every woman wants to marry a man that has self-control and can execute that. And so if he has difficulty uh, channeling his energy in other places, um, I think he need not to get married. No, he's not cheating. He has self-control, right. but he had that energy. Right. And when a woman says, hey, I want to be your only woman you're sleeping with, mm-hmm. she has to be able to to satisfy that energy would you I say? would imagine that that energy would have been already shifted prior to the marriage I don't think he's gonna walk through the door and be like all right now you're the only one I'm gonna be sleeping with I don't think that that would be a marriage that I would enjoy why not that's part of and that part of marriage to give a person uh why, so you were sexually active with other people before we walked down the aisle I'm just saying I would not want to be in that marriage I'm very concrete on that no I'm just I'm just saying if you understand it, if I meet, so let's if scenario, me and you meet today with our first date. I might be having sex with other people, right? 
right now on our date. Mm -hmm. We never had sex before. True. And then we date, let's say we date three weeks and say, we're going to make this official. Mm -hmm. I'm still having sex with those other people. No. But now I say we get together in a relationship, not a marriage. And now I'm giving you all of the energy that I had that for those, let's say two or three women. And you're the only person to get it. Mm -hmm. You don't think you're supposed to be able to meet that sexual, fill that sexual gap that I have? I feel like I can do as much as I can. Oh, okay. So I would try, but I ain't getting ready to be trying to bend it, bend myself over every time you get ready because you used to pound in three, four different vaginas. No, I don't care to. Oh. Like I said, if that's going to be difficult for a person to redirect their energy, mm -hmm. it's going to be difficult for them to have a little bit more self-control and self-restraint considering their partner's needs as well. That person needs not to get married or be in a relationship. You should continue to hit the other three, four, and figure out which one you like the best. Mm. Or do that for the rest of your life. Yeah. Get out the way and let people that want to get married to people that can <clears throat> abide by those qualifications for marriage, let them marry other people that qualify as well because that person that you're describing doesn't really qualify. They might do qualify. Not for the traditional marriage that we're talking about. Why well, wouldn't they qualify? If, if they you're saying you have the appetite for three or four women and you're trying to force that woman to take I, no, that appetite. No, hold on. That's the wrong word. Okay. The wrong word. The word that I Highly asked, suggest. The, no, I don't highly suggest anything. I'm very blunt about what I'm saying. I'm saying as a woman, mm -hmm. do you have the understanding that when you say yeah. about monogamy, because I hear a lot of women saying they want monogamy and push for monogamy more than men do they don't understand that they're going to take on all of that energy in a monogamous relationship they are going to yeah or might. that they can they're it's going to take to. the energy yeah i didn't say the sex they're going to take on that sexual energy so yeah. even if you're not having sex with me that's still me slap you on the butt that's still me coming to kiss on you that's still me you know grabbing a breast that's that's still going to be sexual energy you still have to deal with you might i've been with women and I explained to women, hold on. Sean said, do you have sex with someone who really, who doesn't really want to participate? Cedric, I don't know what's pleasurable about a chore. I feel like there's a lot of chores when it comes to marriage. And that's why, as a man, do you express those expectations prior to marry her? Uh, yes. And that's what I was trying to say. I've actually, out of my dating experience, when it comes to sex, I think I've only had one woman. When I say, hey, I got a very high sex drive that actually stuck with that high sex drive. And this is not me, you know, forcing it on. It's like, oh, no, I can, I can handle it. A whoop, a whoop. If we get there, you know, if I'm going to have sex three times a week, it's like she might be good at one time a week. And so those are the, a, lot of, a lot of issues that I encounter. It's, it's like I'm telling you, being honest with you, because I'm very vocal and very honest about what I expect out of my partner, especially when it comes to sex. And it's like women say they can, but they don't live up to that yeah well to answer your initial question i think we do understand and comprehend why does that seem like there'd be an issue though when people get into relationships or get married i don't know I, I honestly I, I don't know about other people's sex lives so i really don't know the answer oh you never had an issue doing your sex life not particularly oh so Ashanti said she got that walk basically. Oh, I didn't say, I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying that because she uh she gave vaginals for a living. I ain't that's... that don't got nothing to do with the vaginal canal. Oh, I don't know. I thought you might have seen the vulva. I thought you might have seen how when you scrub <laughs> scrub the cootie pop, how it react and stuff. So I thought you might compare. It your... is the vulva. I don't do anything in the vaginal canal. Only places where hair grows. I don't do a hair yeah, sometimes grow on the side of the leg and stuff like that. You do that too. I do the Brazilian bikini, so I do the vulva inner thigh. You had to clear that a little quick, huh? Yeah. Oh. In the labia, I do not do vaginal uh waxing. I don't go up in nothing that a uh, the same areas that your OBGYN will frequent. I will not. So yeah. I think everybody don't have the same sex drive, but what can I say? Sometimes there's a mental and emotional disconnect that causes her not to want to. I think that goes for men and women. Because I've heard men that be in relationships with women not wanting to have sex with their wives or girlfriends too because there's a disconnect. And 
actually, I think that's part of the ills and flow of being in a relationship, too, because, you know, I was not going to be hitting on all cylinders. You're not going to always see eye to eye on things. Hell, y'all might not even be uh, talking about the same page. Y'all might not be on the same book. So that's a thing that a lot of people and couples, I don't think, want to work through of today. I love you tomorrow. I might not love you as much. And, you know, Wednesday, I don't love you at all. Mm -hmm. Or go through three months of not loving a person and then loving them for a month or go through a whole year of loving them and be madly in love with them and, you know, grows deeply. But it seems like when you fall in and out of love with someone, it seems like when you fall back in love with them, each time is a deeper love. That's from my experience. I don't know. But it just seems like when you fall back in love with them, this is the sixth time I know I'm feeling in love with you. Like, I feel like I'm deeper in love with you because I think part of that falling out of love aspect is trust. Hmm. And I think a lot of times when we fall out of love, it's like, I need this person to regain my trust. Not saying they betrayed it. It just, when you're in a relationship, it's always a trust building exercise. Yeah. And um, I don't think a lot of people comprehend that you're always working towards trust. You're always building trust. You're always, you know, giving reassurance, you know, when your wife comes, Hey, am I pretty today? That's, <clears> you know, <throat> typical reassurance. Hey, do you love me? I know I love you. So I think when you are falling out of love, it's like, you've been doing it so long. I need you to elevate the levels of trust that I have. Oh. What do you think about that? Um, <coughs> What's your longest relationship? <coughs> Post 21. Maybe two years. Did you? Well, y'all was two years. That's still fairly young. But did you have the ebb and flow of in love, out of love? No, if I'm out of love, I'm out. At any time you out? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I can't really flip the switch. I mean, it just depends. Like, yeah, it's I feel like ways. I can fall out of like, of course. Mm. But like, if I'm like, I don't even love this man no more. I don't gotta love you no more. Yeah, I can go. But you don't think? So you mean to tell me the whole time you with somebody, you in a state of love? I was like, yeah. I mean, I may not like them, but like ultimately, yeah, I love you. I I care about you. That doesn't change. I mean, I like you right now. But if I fall out of love with you, that's not just something I'm be like, oh, I don't love him today. In two weeks, I'm gonna love him again. I am not married to you. Okay. Well, I'm look, I'm just I'm just gonna <laughs> let you have that because yeah. you know, most people that I hear, and this is a recurrent thing, this is the ebb and flow of relationships. Yeah, I'm and, not with know. the back and forth, up and down. Like like I said, if you think I'm just not I'm, liking somebody, like oh they're getting on I my feel nerves, like I feel but. like liking them is the what you need more than sometimes loving them because sometimes people I've seen people love somebody they don't particularly like. Like they don't enjoy their company. They don't like being around them. Mm -hmm. They don't like you know traveling with them. Like I think if you like them, like I know I can have fun with this person. I know it's gonna be enjoyable. I go through rough times, but I enjoy their company. I love staying in the house with them. I I like doing these things with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you get. That's what gets you by. But typically, when yeah. I sing, people love. Like I can look think about my grandmother. I think my grandmama really loved my grandfather, but she did not like him. Right. Like at all. Like they didn't go to church together. They didn't, they didn't do anything together. He slept in another room and stuff like that. So more people need to be themselves. Too many people putting up an act. I agree 100%. Yeah. So I, I don't, I mean, I think love should be, um, love is conditional, you know, when the conditions are not met any longer, I think. So you think love I'm is trying, conditional. I, I do think love is conditional outside of a mother, child or parent child relationship. I do think love is conditional. I think love is conditional too. Why we can't say that nowadays though? I do. You do, I do, but for the most part, people say that's kind of uh, <laughs> a messed up idea to think love is conditional. Why is that? Because people feel like they should get love freely. They do from their parents. A lot of people ain't had their parents. A parent or, figure. Or, or just one parent figure. Yeah, like I, I do. I, I don't think because even when you look at your friendships, that is conditional. Yeah. You know, we are friends because we enjoy each other's company. We like the same things. We have the same hobbies. Um, We mesh well. If you guys all of a sudden stop meshing well, the friendship is going to end. Yeah, I agree. Sean, are you married? <clears throat> I don't know if you're married. I know you'll see what you'll do, but I don't know if y'all are married or not. But she said, I 
I agree. I think the light component has to exist to survive as odd as that sounds. Yeah. Well, I haven't reached that pinnacle. Yeah, it's, I pray. Like I, I no, honestly, I pray that you never have to. Yeah. Like, I mean, I want, I, I want you to have that Disney fairy tale love that's always existent there. She said, yes, yeah, she's married. That's always yeah. existing there. I want you to I, have I it. haven't had love that's like, I mean, like, I feel like love is consistent. I said, I may not like you, but I don't think that my love has wavered. But I do think when the conditions of that love have not been met anymore or not being met, I'm comfortable to leave the relationship. <laughs> New York said, well, a lot of people can't even get their money right. Trying to get in a relationship right, trying to get a relationship right is just as difficult. That's true. I agree with that statement there. I, I do agree with that statement though. But like, like I say, uh I think I'm not gonna I'm not trying to argue the like a love part, but you know, like I said, most people I know that they just have to like that person because love feelings I think are fleeting. You don't think feelings are fleeting, you don't no, think I think like is more fleeting. What? Yeah, I can like you now. Like I love my sister. I don't like her sometimes. I think that's different. I think they come back to like I y'all have the my, same DNA too. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I love my friends, but I don't like them sometimes. I love my man. I don't like him sometimes. Like okay. I'm I just I just I hear I I just listen to stuff because I'm at the time now. It's like it'll all come out in the wash. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of hard for me to say that because I don't want you to have that. Like I don't want to wish that on you. I want you to have the what you desire out of life and that's with anybody and i think that people themselves when it comes to dating they don't desire greatness from themselves yeah they feel like they have to settle and i think men settle more to me than women do what do you think i'm not a man so i i don't know if you was just comparing men and women from like looking at couples like I oh think- he's better than her she's better than him like I and think- not on some monetary just you know the people the caliber people they are I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. Mm. I don't know. I mean, because I don't, <clears throat> I don't know if I would say my friends have settled in their marriage. Like, I think they're both great. Equal, you don't think we all people. settle? I think that there are some things that we like make concessions for. What I'd be like, oh, I really wanted a 10, but I just, I'll do with the four. No. no I think that's extreme. I really want a You think people that extreme when it comes to settling? I mean, that's how I imagine settling. Like, I think my friends are like, okay, these are the things on my list. I got 10 things on the list. Yeah. He hit nine or eight. Great. I think settling would be like, I got 10 things, but mm, they hit like three and a half, four. So, yeah, we're going to go with that one. Mm. It's just like. You can like your opposite sex friends, but not have romantic love feelings. Not saying it's an often occurrence, but love feelings definitely come and go. I think that's subjective, but I mean, I think I don't, I I just don't feel like my, like I can love you and not like you right now. Like even with my male friends that I'm not attracted to, of course, they get on my nerves. I don't like them for a period. I got a male friend right now. I've been talking to months. I still love him. I I'm, don't I'm just, like I'm just, him right now. I'm just going by, like I said, for me, I'm going by what I hear, what I hear a lot of married people say when it comes to like being married. Like sometimes, like I said, you're your friend. I feel like you you like your friend. You might some of your friends you might really love, not in like romantic way, but some people you might really love. But I think your friend you just like to be around them. It's fun and part of liking is on oh, either picture liking. I think it's just fun you know what i'm saying hmm. you know yeah i just <clears throat> i don't know i don't think that my love is wavering that much if if it is i don't want to be in, intertwined in that what what if you let's say you date one guy here we go his love your love waver you date another guy your love waver your love you date another guy your uh, love waver my like love that. is going to waver if the conditions of my love are no longer being met that is true so if your 
if he's supplying you with a hundred thousand dollars a year and he takes it to fifty, you gonna you gonna fall out of love. Is that a condition of my love? I don't think not. I'm saying if if that well, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, that's Is the it, condition that's of my of... love. I, I don't want to be here. Oh, okay. If that's a condition of my love. I don't <clears throat> I'm not even ready to jeopardize my personal feelings because you are inconsistent. Is, is, to that extreme, like is, if is you, there a wiggle room? Is there a wiggle room? Or are you stern in that? Is this one of your principles? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna subject my happiness to your inconsistency, right? Mm -hmm. If we're having a rough patch or a moment, I, I don't like you. But if I get to the point where I don't like you and I don't love you, yeah, um, I, I'm gonna leave. I always got somewhere to go. Bye. Go find a girl. I, look, I, I just I'm just listening now. And the reason that I, I just I'm just listening to people because I like having these conversations is because I feel a lot of stuff that I hear don't register to me in my spirit. And I say that it's supposed to, but it's like we can see what's more so than not. You know what I'm saying? And I feel as if when it if if your love is conditional to that extent i feel like it's gonna be hard for you to just maintain well you gave a very fleeting example right yeah no i'm, I'm not saying, really I'm a condition saying, of love i'm saying if it but i wasn't specifically using 100 i'm just saying if if it changed that much like if it changed from 100 or whatever you conditioned to 50 well you know what I'm saying? I'm, you're equating that to like if i require these things in my love life yeah and it drastically changes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Basically, like that, yeah. I don't, I'm not married to you. I don't have to be here. Okay. I don't want to be with that. Like, I'm okay. Let's say cheating. You, because you're going through a period of cheating right now. I ain't supposed to, I'm just supposed to kick it. No, che no, I, that's an extreme. That's, that's not, a condition of love. Yeah, but that's, I'm just saying, like, I don't think that's a condition of love because I feel as ill. Well, we it's talk people, about mine. Right. But yeah. I feel as, well, we talking about you. Yeah. So my thing is we, that cheating is not a condition of your love. Okay. It is a condition of my love. How I don't want to love a man that's going to cheat on me. I can't. I don't care to love that. It huh? doesn't give me the vibes that I want to reciprocate. Like, oh, my man cheated. He need me to love him through that. I don't think I need. I don't. I don't get that. I, I didn't say. I didn't say. I didn't say. I don't imagine. think my love would be amped up. Like I need to love him more right now. It's given. I need to love him less to get away from this. Or maybe the lack of love he was receiving made him go cheat. Who knows? Yeah, maybe so. I think he should continue to full fledged go in that direction. Yeah, I think. I and think leave so me too. alone. I think so too because I don't think women can. Of today can handle cheating and shit like that. No, so what happens the day you don't have a place to go? Um, I will always have a place to go. So I don't know. I've oh. never had. I've never not had a place to go. So I think you may need to ask someone that has had that insecurity. It's I not think, me. I think that goes back to the podcast we had about the guy. What guy? The poly guy. Yeah. I think it's kind of on the lines of. How he get his girls to stay because they ain't got nowhere. They ain't got nowhere to go. I always got somewhere to go, baby. I got a mama, daddy, grandparents. I got a sister. I got people that love me. I don't have to be nowhere. I don't need to be. And I got my own job. So, do you think <clears throat> people? What is this? That's good. Do you think people seek out people they can manipulate like that? Oh, uh, they have a manipulative, a manipulative spirit, of course. Why do people let themselves get manipulated, manipulated like that? What do you think? Oh, uh, usually people don't allow themselves to get manipulated. I don't, don't think that's so. a definition of it. You don't think people know, hey, this person is trying to get over on me, but and they let it happen, or that wouldn't be manipulation. But I'm saying, like, in terms of let's say love. You don't think that's manipulation? If you are aware of what's going on, it's not manipulation. Well, what if I say compliance? What if, what if I say I'm gonna give you some money back that I borrowed from you and I did this a hundredth time and you still having hope? That is compliance. 
So I don't think I, you could give it all back on 101 times. Yeah, you could. But yeah. let's see. Your recent history shows me your future. <sighs> so you just going to chalk it up like that. Manipulation. I'm going to look up the definition. Yeah, look it up. Because that sounds like compliance. Mm. If you are aware. <coughs> All right. Okay, hold on. Let me look up manipulate. What you looking up? Porn? I did look up manipulation. Oh. But it's like manipulate. Okay. Handle or control, typically a skillful manner to control, influence, cleverly, unfairly, and, you know this word, unconscrupulously. Okay, what does it mean to manipulate someone? Okay. To control or influence something or someone so that you get the advantage, often unfairly and dishonestly. So... I would imagine an unfair advantage usually is in my from how I'm interpreting it to be unaware, right? So if you are, I can't be like, girl, he manipulated me to do this and the third. No, you're aware of the actions that are going on. You are aware of the boundaries. You are aware of the parameters of what's going on. And you are now a compliant participant. So have you ever seen a uh, baby boy? Um, Not really. You ain't seen no more. We can't never talk about pop culture. We're gonna have to get you. We're gonna have to have yeah, you. I see. I know the gist, like the baby daddy, baby mom. I was trying to see did, did Jody did Jody manipulate Yvette? No, she was compliant. We talking about she was driving his car around. Yeah, driving. she was compliant. Oh, she was compliant. Yeah. Oh, she where he needs to go. He didn't have a job, did he? Uh, nah. Sean, okay then. Sean said your black car revolt. Uh-huh. It's already been revoked, girl. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. But yeah, I was like, you can't ever talk about pop. You ain't seen Painted Fool. No. You ain't seen what else somebody asked you the other day? Boys in the Hood. Mm-mm. You ain't seen Friday. Mm-mm. Man, we gotta do we gotta one day uh, the next podcast, you know them the list of uh, stuff. I don't desire to watch that type uh, the of list comedy of stuff, the list of how stuff funny. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna check it off and see how much black cards you're gonna have left okay i'm gonna find one and we're gonna do that okay and we're gonna have to do we gotta put you through the ringer because you miss a lot of pop culture shit Yo, how it's, you gonna do this pod be, be in this podcast it's face? not my style so what's your style of comedy i don't know not that like to be upgraded movie that seems like what that is not funny to me so what what do you what is a knee slapper to you? Mm, I don't know. I'm not really into comedies. I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't really like comedies. I'm a documentary person. Okay, so what documentary documentaries you like? What's your favorite documentary? Um, a favorite one. I don't know if I have a favorite. I have like genres that I really like. Okay, what's your genre then? Like right now, I'm watching the um the Ponzi scheme with um. Oh, I can't remember his name. On Netflix. Excuse me. What is his name? Yeah. He had the biggest Ponzi scheme in America. I don't know who you're talking about. Yes, you do. Madoff. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm watching that. It's dope. Um, it's called Ponzi scheme? No, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like the... um. But um, it is a documentary. On uh, Netflix. Oh, it was released it it not too long ago. I like those. I really like uh like documentaries about like crime. And I like stuff. crime documentaries. Too. Um, or like, I mean, they're all information, but like, uh, like history kind of stuff, like the Ponzi scheme thing, like how embedded he stole like fifty billion dollars for real. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to watch. First that. time they got caught by the IRS, the IRS thought they were gonna say, "Oh, we stole like five million. They had stole four hundred forty-one million dollars. So, how many series ser- uh, episodes is it? I don't know. I think it's probably like probably less than eight. Hey, I'm gonna have to watch that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to watch that for sure. And you know what, Ponzi schemes. Um, yay! Oh, thank you, D Hollins. We really appreciate that. Ponzi schemes are are people that do like big stuff like that. They say for the they say for Mad Day. Mm-hmm. So she had to give up like seventy million uh dollars of her assets. The mm-hmm. wife did. 
I bet she's still living caked up though. They say scammers, they they prepare for the rainy day. Those type. Yeah. She living good. She living fat. Would you date somebody that you knew was doing a Ponzi scheme? Absolutely not. But what if he said, I got a billion dollars in the bank right now? Yeah, what would it yeah. take? The government's gonna come get that. Where else is it? But what but what if he got the money? He gonna give you some money. He gonna break you off 250 off top. They gonna do that. discovery, they gonna come snatch my he stuff. Tell, too. He ain't gonna tell you. What you mean? He's not gonna tell you, tell them that he gave you some money. And then they're like, gonna do a discovery. You know what that is. Yeah, but how they gonna know he gave you the money unless he tells you when they do discovery, they're gonna fine tooth every place a dollar yeah. went red cent where did that go you went to shell gas station you gave I, money to I, a shine I, I understand i'm not gonna be paying that back absolutely well, not i'm saying if he gives you money and they say hey you missing 250 right here he said do you know what discovery is yeah i just said i know what that is how in the world are they not gonna know he gave it to me discovery is part of saying hey we went through all of this we know 250 thousand dollars is missing where did you give it to who did you give it to where did it go? Yeah. Why why is it not accounted for here? That doesn't mean they know exactly where the 250 went. They can't ready to track all that kind of stuff. Where we we'll put $250,000 in cash or for the have it in what the watch Frank machine? Lucas had a bit of the dog. My house. name ain't Frank Lucas. Well, I'm trying to give you some examples of where you can put all I don't money. want stolen money. Well, look, I'm going to say this. If you meet a man and he about to give you this type of money, I need you to maneuver a way where I can get the money. No, you marry him or you talk to him. I'm not doing it. No, no. We'll see. You're going too far. I need you. I'm going to, too far. I, I don't want to give you stolen money. <laughs> I need you to maneuver. I ain't going to maneuver it nothing. To where it could come to my pocket and it ain't got to even involve you. No, you better call him. You better call him. I'm not doing that. I don't want to go to jail. You want to go? Hell no. Well, then don't shit. be looking at me. I don't got nothing to do with it. I ain't seen no money. I don't hey, know nobody. Hell nah, jail ain't for me. Mm. Shit, I like I like to be laid up with a warm body, and I don't like men, so they okay. ain't need, they ain't need my stuff. I don't up. even know him like that. If I hear him or something like that, I don't even know that man. I'm uh, out. No. Uh, well, let's finish it on this. Let's okay. end on this. How y'all feel about people, women proposing to men? Uh. Up the earth. How do y'all feel? What you said is you gonna drop kick somebody in the back of the neck if you see Yes, it, I'm not a violent girl, just for reference. I'm not a violent girl. If I see a woman get on bended knee, I might become the scammer. I might rob her. You I'm gonna rob her? Yeah, I'm gonna rob her of the ring, her purse. I'm gonna snatch her wig off. It's gonna be a scene. Why are you doing this, ma'am? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> oh my so, god. So don't. You don't think it's part of the shoot your shot culture? I think it definitely. Look, I would rather die too. Okay, I would rather die. Um, I think it's influenced by the shoot your shot culture, and they got these women heavily pursuing men all the way to the altar. As a man, I'm running away. You're not finna. You're not finna propose to me. This is what a man's supposed to. But these men let them get down, and because I. I I, I would just um if this was happening to me, if I seen a woman get on her knee in front of me, I'm just gonna get on my knee and like act like I'm tying her shoe, like baby, get the fuck up. Like you you need to get up right now because this shit is not finna go how you think it is. So just you know <laughs> just, just get back on up. I don't uh, think that I think it's like a state of shock that they be in. If you look at the men face, they do be shocked. They be looking like any be other people around and they be trying that's to figure why, out that's how why, to regulate. That's why your mind got in, in 2023, your mind, if you've been dating a, a woman for so long, mm -hmm. you already got to have a mindset that she might propose to you one day. No, you bet not with me. <laughs> not with me. You got to have that mindset. Hey, she might propose. They would literally have to nail me to a cross before I ever even went to look at a ring for you, for you in, or for a man. And, and I don't have one on my finger. If I get down, you better be getting ready to take my last name. Yeah, what if he is? What if he said, I took your last name? I'll beat his ass. Bro. I don't even cuss <laughs> on here. I will fight him. I will steal on him every man. I would be so mad. So, so that wouldn't turn you on? No. A lot of men today are kind of feminine, and a lot of women are kind of masculine. I don't care for nothing. Girl, look, I actually was um, friends with a guy. And he told me his girl had proposed to him. And I was like, "What?" Yes, 
I was like, oh my God. And he, and he was like, yeah, it was some real boss ish. Like, she really handled that. Like, da, da. he was excited about this? Yeah. I said, would you let, because they broke up. I said, would you let your next girl do that? He was like, yeah, I would. That was like real boss stuff. She took control in the moment. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he definitely laid it. He, she took control of him. That's what women say. Yeah. <laughs> what have you heard your man describe you? Oh, she took control of the moment. I bet they better be talking about the kids. Oh, you know? okay. It gotta be. It gotta be something specifically yeah. for you as a woman. I mean, I, I take control of my relationship, but as far as directing marriage, yeah. Mm. Of course, I'm gonna be telling my man. I, I, I'm upfront. You know, hey. I want to get married. You yeah. know, I'm going to be a wife and it's going to be you or it's going to be somebody else. But I'm going to get married and I don't plan on being your girlfriend for seven years. OK, so we need to go ahead and figure out, you know, where where we're going to be moving. Not yeah. soon, but you know what I mean? Like we need to make sure we're going to be going in the same direction because I'm not going to be your girlfriend for 10 years. And I'm definitely not going to be begging a man to marry me. No, I go to the next one. Do you think women put a lot of pressure on men to get married? Yeah, I think they do. Um, when they, I feel like the pressure typically comes though when the discussion wasn't made initially. What you mean? So, like, if she had in her mind, okay, I want to get married. I, if we've been dating for two years. I want to get engaged. And mm -hmm. she hadn't told him that. It's just like something she thought in her mind. And now it's like close to two years. She's like, hey, we need to start trying to figure out how to get married. Hey. We need to start trying to figure out when we're going to get engaged. Do you want to get married? Are you taking a relationship serious? When are we going to the next level? I think that's when the pressure comes. Mm. First, when you say in the beginning, hey, I got about two years in a relationship and I'm going to be looking to progress. If that's not a speed, you may be comfortable going in. I do understand, but, you know, you just have to decide. I hear, I hear you. That sounds good, but I do think <sighs> I'll say this. I heard this a lot, and I think it's fairly true. When you don't propose to a woman, a lot of times she stays around a little bit longer <clears> than <throat> you proposing to her and getting marrying her. Yeah, it so, can be true for some. Yeah, I, I think I think it's true for a lot. Not I for think. me. I'm not even ready to be with your girlfriend longer than three years. I'm sorry. Mm. I'm gonna be dating you and others. When I wake up on my three year anniversary, I, we gonna go and have a oh, great dinner. Don't drop him on now because you know he ain't gonna be uh there. Yeah, I'm gonna be dating you. I'm gonna still have fun and get the benefits of being with you. But I already know you're not trying to fulfill my every desire in life. Yeah. So I'm also not gonna let my boyfriend stop me from finding my husband. So I'm now single. You can be dating me. I ain't dating you no more. I'm dating y'all. You don't think that's a never-ending cycle for women? No, not particularly. I've like seen a lot of women and dated a bunch of men and they still ain't got married and had picked up a couple of kids on the damn way. Hmm, that's sad. That's sad. That's what just we see that a lot. I ain't saying it's all. That seems like a a big majority. They saying, but they say about 20, 30, 40 percent of the women. Yeah, Sean, I'm with you. Will be single and childless. Possibly. This is that. That's a crazy. That's a crazy uh, stat to have right there. Because typically, I think women always procreate, but you're gonna have a society <laughs> where women ain't. Yeah. I ain't having kids. Time is precious, especially to women who want kids in marriage, not a baby daddy. Women can't have kids forever without complications, so it's best to cut loose. Losses. Uh, oh, losses. At least for sure. That's true. Childbearing age women. That's true, girl. I agree. Yeah, but women ain't worried about that. Now they freezing their eggs. Yeah. You know, women freezing their eggs because they know, you know, they're going to be an old hen one day probably trying to have kids. So it's better just to freeze eggs. And, you know, like Lolo Jones, and she was crying about how, you know, she probably should have, you know, dated and probably put a man, you know, maybe try to prioritize marriage somewhere along her career. But now she's like on her, I think, like last few eggs or last in vitro or she else she's trying to see if she can get pregnant. But people don't understand with in vitro too, when it comes to that age, you only have a select number of eggs, mm -hmm. and when that runs out, you it's, it's pretty pretty bad. Yeah, like you just, there's no kids unless you're gonna adopt. Yeah. How do you feel about women going that route, having to freeze their eggs nowadays? What what you think prompted women to do that? It's just on the safe side. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people are often to have kids later on in life because they want to be more financially sound. Yeah. Um. 
also coupled with the fact that a lot of people want to be married as well. But I think the number one reason is they want to be able to give that child the best life mm -hmm. that they can. And we already know statistics show that you are usually not at your financial peak, as, especially as a woman or a man at 21 compared to when you're 35 and you're climbing that ladder. So yeah. um, <clears throat> I think it's a, a smart decision to make. I think it's probably a difficult one to make, a, you know, while you're single. But yeah. I think the reward definitely will pay off. Yeah. So anything else you want to say before we get up out of here? Don't propose to men, ladies. Don't you will see me. I will look like uh, Jamal Adams. I will tackle you. Who is Jamal Adams? And he's a, a defensive player, right? I don't know. I don't, watch, I don't watch football. He's real fine, too. Oh, that's why you know him, because he's fine. Yeah, I've seen him in person. He's so good. Um, yeah, you'll see me like Deron, Deron Payne, um, Reuben Foster. I know him from Alabama. Yeah, um, definitely Jamal Adams. I will come in, uh, like sack you like a quarterback. You gonna do that later like that? You gonna ruin a moment? Yeah. Um, I hope. I hope we out. I hope we out somewhere together. And a lady proposes to her. I'm gonna try to trip and fall over her. Like I swear, I'm gonna just run straight over, and I'm just gonna fall like right on top of her. Like, girl, oh my god, get up, get bitch, get ass. up, <laughs> get your ass. How you gonna be? They gonna be like, bitch, get up. Yes. Oh man, I hope that happens. We out one day. It's gonna happen. It's probably gonna happen at folk seasons because there's a lot of old people in there. And proposing to men is some old old woman shit. I don't see young, I don't see young women doing that shit. I it's, hate it's it. a last ditch effort. I hate it. Yeah. Is that mm. dude? Yes. Oh, he used to play for uh, New York Jets. Oh, so you follow? she follow this nigga on Instagram? No, I don't. I just searched him. He's gorgeous. He's like a regular ass nigga to me. Mm. Not when he in that, um, what? not when he got that helmet on. <laughs> He's fine. He smells good. He got too. a purse? He got bags. He goes to the game. He be going, I'm saying he got a purse too? They be having bags. Look at oh. that. Multiple bags. Now, LeBron have purses on, right? Across yeah, the they, I told you 2 chains had a purse on the other day. Yeah. Uh, he be having bags. I, I feel like it be like game day bags. I don't know. Mm -mm -mm. They be trying to disguise what they want. They, 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 they be trying to disguise who they really it's is. It's an old crush. My man now is Da Vinci. Who the fuck is Da Vinci? From BMF. Terry. <sighs> These niggas only become attractive because they be on TV. He is chocolate and he is fine. He is tall and he is dating Lala Anthony and I am a woman. And he got one eye. In the movie. Oh, that ain't real. Yeah, it's not uh, real. <laughs> it looked too good. Because in the movie, in the real life, Terry, I was. Yeah, up, yeah. I just thought he was. No, nah, he fine. He could see straight. I thought they had made that point. He got shot to make him because really I had a messed up eye. Oh, okay. Even with the mess of eye. Yes. Do you think they always give La La pointless sex roles in her in her <laughs> scenes? Yeah, I think she's branded in that way. Just like uh I don't know, what's that lady's name that uh is on the Tyler Pierce show? She's like Marky. Oh yeah. She's uh, branded she in branded that type of even when the, uh what that movie is with her, she had the twin daughter. Yeah. You know that's what you call a mama though. Meech mama, I think. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's Mama. Okay, yeah. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, hold on. And just like it's that lady uh, with the eyebrows on the Tyler Perry movies, you know what I'm talking about. She always be the evil mama. Mm -hmm. what always. Is that? What's the name of the Meech? Oh, Demetrius? Yeah. Meech Jr., I think it is. But yeah, I love Da Vinci. That's my man. So fine. So fine. I'm name dropping tonight. That's crazy. Hold on, let me see images. Pretend you're his side chick. Oh, you right. Cause she didn't well, you know, she didn't leave her husband. So he had a baby, but I ain't finna be a baby mom. Who? Lala. Oh. She didn't leave. She didn't leave Carmelo till he had a, a break baby in his marriage. They was on a break. In a marriage? Well, you can't well, they said it was a break. Uh. I don't know. Yeah, this so. They always hey, say hey, it's a break, baby. Yeah. 
Yeah. A lady be screaming. They always say it's a break baby when the baby be conceived during the marriage. Please. That's yeah, what they say, so they be lying. Yeah. You don't break up from a marriage unless it is legal separation. What would they have legal separation? I, to my knowledge, she didn't say they were separated. You said a break. Neither break, did could, he? break could be legal separation. They ain't got to go that far. I don't think it was filed. Uh, look, I don't know. Hey. I just, maybe it was a break. Maybe that's how she got time. To, he got time to go make a baby. He got time to make babies. Man, he on the road all the time. He this traveled. girl didn't even live in the United States. Oh, I don't know the story. Yeah, she lived in Europe, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, for real? Yeah. Maybe she flew over here. Guess who else had a break baby? LeBron James. I mean, not LeBron James, but uh, Dwayne Wade. He did? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Break baby. Oh, wait, why we was why, why we was not why really we, together. Gabrielle? Yeah. You're lying. No, he does. This girl was on Basketball Wives. I don't watch basketball. I don't watch the drama like that. Like, this was before she had the baby, if I'm not mistaken. No, I ain't even know this. Yes. We should talk about break babies one day. Okay. Yeah. Sean say, good show, guys. Kept my attention. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, here she go. Aja. Dwayne Wade's baby mama, Aja. 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 Metal. Oh, no. Yeah, this over right here. Let me read it. Let me switch to the light. All right, y'all have a great night. Are we? Are we done? I'm no. sorry. Yeah, right. Yeah, this she had the heartbreak. She didn't do it after now. Her father, the child, been sending a series of cryptic messages on social media. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Break, baby. Oh. While you're married. <laughs> Well, like Ashanti said, guys, don't propose to men. Mm -mm. I'm going to end tonight on It's the New Normal Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel, like the channel, give us that thumbs, uh, thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and leave us comments on the content or content you want us to discuss. If you're on Facebook, make sure you follow my page the new normal podcast um share the video and like it as well we love you guys y'all have a good night peace bye